This is the Mount Messenger Bypass, a monumental engineering project where New Zealand is spending over $365 million to build just six kilometers of highway. The plan seems straightforward. Punch a 235-meter tunnel through a ridge and span a valley with a massive 125-meter bridge. However, the mountain itself is fighting back. Engineers must bore through notoriously soft papa rock, a mudstone so unstable it can crumble like wet chalk. They have to erect a giant bridge in a sacred and protected wetland without a single support pillar touching the valley floor, all while facing fierce, multi-year legal battles from opponents trying to shut the entire project down. So how do you defeat a mountain that refuses to be tamed and build a modern highway when the geology, the environment and the courts all stand in your way? The story of State Highway 3 over Mount Messenger began not with giant machines but with grit and dynamite. The first surveyors marked a path through the dense Taranaki bush in 1914, and by 1922, construction crews from the Public Works Department began the monumental task of carving a road out of the wilderness. The original Mount Messenger Bypass, a narrow hole in the earth, was blasted open in 1916. For years, workers blasted and hauled away thousands of tons of soft mudstone, known locally as papa, and limestone just to create what they called a road of reasonable width and grade. When the Oakino Gorge section finally opened in 1923, it was an engineering triumph for its time, connecting the Taranaki region to the rest of the country like never before. But the road was built for the cars and buggies of the 1920s, not the massive trucks that carry millions of dollars in freight over it every single day. For decades, the road has been plagued by problems. The very ground it is built on, a geological formation of soft sandstone and mudstone, is notoriously unstable, leading to constant slips, closures and delays that strangle the region's economy. After years of lobbying and mounting evidence that small fixes were not enough, the decision was made. The old road could not be saved, it had to be bypassed. But the challenge was immense, how could engineers possibly conquer this terrain? The answer was to launch one of New Zealand's most ambitious and technically complex roading projects, a six-kilometer route named Te Ara o Te Ata, or the Path of Dawn. The first and biggest task was simply moving the mountain itself. The project required a colossal earth-moving operation, digging out approximately 960,000 cubic meters of rock and soil, and placing about 890,000 cubic meters of rock and soil meters to build up the new road. To understand that scale, 960,000 cubic meters of earth is enough to fill over 380 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Engineers designed the route to perfectly balance the amount of earth they cut away with the amount they needed to build up, meaning very little material had to be trucked in or out, a huge saving in cost and environmental impact. But digging into the soft rock of Mount Messenger is incredibly risky. Some of the cuts into the hillside are 60 meters deep, as tall as a 20-story building. To stop these massive walls of earth from collapsing, engineers deployed a clever two-part solution. For any rock face higher than 20 meters, they draped a curtain of steel mesh over the surface. This acts like a giant safety net, catching any falling rocks and safely guiding them into ditches at the bottom. Where there were layers of soil above the rock, they drilled and cemented long steel rods called soil nails deep into the hillside, effectively stitching the unstable ground together. This incredible effort reshaped the landscape, creating a new path that is 65 meters lower than the old treacherous route and has a maximum steepness of just 7.5%, making it far safer and more fuel efficient for the heavy trucks that are the region's lifeblood. But before they could move a single shovel full of dirt in the most remote parts of the project, the construction team faced a massive problem. The heart of the new route lay deep within a steep, inaccessible valley surrounded by dense, protected forest. Building a traditional access road would have meant carving a destructive scar through the very environment they were trying to protect. Their solution was something never before seen on a New Zealand road project, a road in the sky. They built a massive industrial cableway, a 28-meter tall central tower about the height of a nine-story building, was erected on a ridge. From there, two thick 60-millimeter steel cables stretched 600 meters across the valley to a northern anchor point, 
with another 500 meters of cable running to a southern anchor to keep it all stable. This aerial highway could carry a payload of 20 tons in a single journey, enough to lift four large elephants. It transported everything from excavators and bulldozers to building materials and an eight-person gondola for workers. This single piece of innovative engineering was the key that unlocked the entire project. It allowed crews to access the deepest fill area, a massive man-made embankment requiring 660,000 cubic meters of material without ever having to build a damaging access track through the forest floor. It was a perfect example of the project's guiding principle. Engineering must serve the environment, not the other way around. With access to the site secured, the next great challenge was to punch a hole directly through the main ridgeline. Instead of carving a massive destructive trench over the top of the mountain, the plan called for a 235 meter long tunnel. To dig it, the team brought in a 110 ton roadheader machine, a mechanical monster named Hinetu Parimaunga, after the Maori deity of mountains and cliffs. This machine uses a powerful rotating cutting head to chew directly through the rock at a rate of up to three meters per day. The process was methodical. First, the road header excavated the top half of the tunnel, known as the top heading. As it advanced, the newly exposed rock was immediately stabilized. Crews sprayed a special mix of steel fiber reinforced concrete, called shotcrete, at high velocity onto the tunnel walls and ceiling. This created a strong, instant support structure. For extra fire safety, the concrete mix also contained synthetic microfibers. In the intense heat of a fire, these fibers melt away, creating tiny channels that allow moisture to escape, preventing the concrete from exploding. Once the top heading was complete, the road header returned to excavate the bottom section, or bench, creating a final tunnel that is 13 meters wide and 9 meters high, large enough to accommodate even the biggest oversized trucks. This tunnel is more than just a road, it is a wildlife corridor. By going under the ridge instead of over it, the design allows animals to move freely and safely across the landscape above, completely separated from the traffic below. The new road also had to cross two sensitive valleys, requiring bridges that were designed with the environment as the top priority. The largest is a 125 meter long bridge, longer than a rugby field, that spans a stream feeding into the ecologically vital Mimi wetland. Building a bridge here was a delicate operation. To avoid harming the wetland, engineers came up with a brilliant design. Instead of placing support piers directly into the stream or the swampy ground, they used angled steel piers, or legs, that are anchored on the stable valley sides. This allows the entire steel girder bridge to gracefully leap over the wetland without ever touching it. To build this complex structure, they first built a temporary staging bridge, a smaller platform that gave them a base to work from with minimal disturbance. Further north, a smaller 30-meter bridge was needed to cross a stream and keep the road's gradient smooth. For this, they used a different technology called a Super T girder. A Super T is a massive concrete beam, pre-made in a factory, shaped like a T, with a very wide top flange. These giant Lego-like pieces were trucked to the site and simply lifted into place, allowing for incredibly fast and efficient construction. Orchestrating all these complex operations in such difficult terrain would have been nearly impossible with old-fashioned paper blueprints. Instead, the project team lived in the digital world. They used advanced 3D computer models to create a virtual version of the entire bypass. A special visualization tool called Humphrey allowed engineers, stakeholders, and EWI partners to do a virtual fly-through of the proposed route long before any construction started. This digital twin of the project was invaluable. For example, when engineers looked at the plans for the deep cuttings on paper, they knew they were steep. But when they saw them in the 3D model, they truly understood their immense scale and depth. This new perspective allowed them to completely rethink their construction methods saving time, reducing risk, and, most importantly, finding ways to shrink the project's footprint to save more of the native forest. This digital-first approach ensured that every single person, from the project director to the machine operator, was working from the exact same plan, bridging the gap between paper and reality. From the very beginning, Te Ara o Te Ata was designed to be an ecological project first and a transport project second. 
This commitment has resulted in one of the largest and most comprehensive environmental restoration programs ever attached to an infrastructure project in New Zealand. The centrepiece is a promise of pest management in perpetuity across a massive 3,650 hectare area of surrounding forest. For decades, invasive predators like rats, possums and stoats have devastated the native wildlife. The project is now fighting back with an intensive program of trapping and aerial bait drops to give the forest a chance to recover. This effort is a core part of a deep partnership with the local iwi Ngati Tama, the traditional guardians of the land. In a landmark agreement, Ngati Tama provided 20 hectares of their land for the road. In return, they received a 120 hectare coastal property, financial compensation, and the perpetual pest management program, empowering them to restore their ancestral lands. However, this visionary project has not been without conflict. The cost has soared from an initial estimate of around $90 million in 2016 to an approved budget of over $365 million by 2025, driven by construction inflation and years of legal challenges. The project faced multiple court cases from landowners fighting the compulsory acquisition of their land and a major legal battle from environmental groups who successfully argued that the original government permit unlawfully allowed for protected wildlife to be killed in exchange for conservation work elsewhere. These struggles highlight the profound difficulty of balancing national infrastructure needs, private property rights, and absolute environmental protections. The bypass is expected to be fully completed in late 2026, finally bringing a new era of safety and reliability to this critical route. The Mount Messenger Bypass is more than just a road. It is a story of how modern engineering can work with nature, not against it. It proves that a commitment to culture and conservation can be woven into the very fabric of a major infrastructure project. What do you think of this approach? Should more mega-projects be required to leave the environment in a better state than they found it? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into incredible engineering, make sure to like this video subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next story.